In this video, we're gonna look at creating a button that's gonna to toggle a UI panel. And our UI panel is just gonna contain some text. This could be used to help the player know what buttons to press, how to play your game, maybe what the goal of your game is. The panel that gets toggled could be far more compl complex and have a lot more functionality, but we're gonna keep it simple. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna switch over to my scene view and I'm gonna create my UI elements. So first off, I'm gonna to go to my canvas and I'm gonna right click UI button. And that creates my new button. I'm gonna resize this a little bit and move it up into the top window up here. I'm gonna open up my button in the hierarchy, go to the text option, and I'm gonna retype this as help. And I'm just gonna use this as a way to toggle on and off some help text for the player. Once again, I'm gonna choose the best fit option so it sizes up a little bit. I'm also gonna use my UGUI tools to set the anchors. I'm gonna come up here to UGUI anchors to corners and goes like that. And just like in the previous video, when we set our anchors like this, it helps to control the size and is generally what we want the anchors to be doing. Next, we need to create our panel with our text. So I'm gonna go back up to canvas, right click, UI, panel. And I'm gonna shrink this down because it doesn't need to be that big. Size it like that. Maybe I'll put it in the middle. And then in this panel, I'm gonna create two text objects. First one can look like this. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna kinda of nestle that up at the top, and this is gonna be our header. And then I'm gonna duplicate that, slide that down, and make that full size. I'm gonna rename these in my hierarchy, just to keep things organized, like so. In the header, I'm gonna type in help text, I'm gonna center that, and do a best fit. Maybe we'll make that a little prettier. Well, let's go yellow, something like that. Our help text, I'm gonna center this as well. Maybe I'll leave it at the top like so. And what I'm gonna do just for the sake of filling it in, I'm gonna use kind of a dummy text generator. I'm gonna grab some dummy text and stick that in there. And I'm gonna change that to a lighter white. And as I do that, I'm gonna change my panel color, I'm gonna darken that up quite a bit and make it a little less transparent. Okay, so there we've got our help text. Now we need to wire up our button and we'll do that next. On our button, we need to add a flow machine. So we'll do that. Now in the past, we've been creating macros and those are really great for reusing code over and over again. In this case, we're gonna create an embedded macro and that's a little bit different. What that does is the code is actually gonna be part of this component. If I delete this component, the code is gone. It's not gonna show up in my project like my other macros. So there are some cautions to it. The reason we're gonna do that is so that we can drop in a scene object and get a reference to a scene object. If we have a typical macro, we cannot drop in scene objects, we can only drop in prefabs. And in this case, we're gonna need a reference to this panel so we can turn it on and off. So I'm gonna click here and go to embedded. And you'll note here, I no longer have an option to drop in my macro and it fills in my start and update functions for me. I'm gonna delete both of these and I'm gonna right click to add a unit and I'm gonna look for the on click event. And this first one that pops up here, this on button click, this is the one I want. This is an event that's gonna get called whenever the button is clicked. And again, you can see here, the option is self. Since this flow machine is on the button, we're good to go. I'm then gonna drag the flow out. And what we wanna do is toggle this panel on and off. So I'm gonna search for game object, active, and set active. Now, a couple things that we wanna do here. We don't wanna to toggle the button on and off. So we need to drag out this node here. And we're gonna use a game object literal. And we're gonna drag the panel from our hierarchy into that option. And again, that's what the embedded macro allows us to do. We're pulling in a scene object, not a prefab. We don't wanna just turn that object off. We wanna be a little bit more sophisticated than that. If we just leave it like this, we can turn the help text off, but we can't turn it back on. And what we want is a toggle. So we're gonna take this game object and we're gonna look for game object active self is what we're looking for here. And that just returns a Boolean, is this object active or not. And then we wanna do the opposite. If the object's on, we wanna turn it off. If it's off, we wanna turn it on. So we're gonna drag this out and we're gonna look for negate, which just flips the value of that Boolean. And I'm gonna drag that in here. 
And now let's see if that works. Let's push play. I've got my help button up here. If I click it, my help text toggles on and off. And again, this is a toggle button. It can be used to toggle on a lot more sophisticated features than a simple text box with garbledy gook in it. So there you go, we've created a button that can toggle another UI element on and off. In our next video, we're gonna look at creating a very simple start scene that will allow us to load our level and quit our game. So I hope that was helpful and I hope to see you next time.